Why is everybody singing? Why? Why? Why is everybody singing? The bloody hell. Why is everybody singing? Why is everybody singing? Why is everybody singing? Is everybody singing? And why am I holding this hat? The musical is fundamentally different from any other episode I've ever done, or I think any episode anyone has done on this show. It goes back years and years and years. It was just super fun. Laura's this incredible director who's been with us for so long, but we've always known that he has the capacity to do much more than the kind of thing we do here. And so when they said that Laurie was directing it, I was super excited because I knew that he would do something interesting or a little bit out of the box, which is exactly what happened. I have been opposed to it the entire time. And so much so that they never even showed me a script. They never even told me what the idea was. And I think it was for a long time. <laughs> but a good thing came out of that. I think the idea got refined and refined, and, and I would say that by the time somebody got tasked with telling me, hey, we're gonna do a musical episode, they had really honed the idea. Paul Aiken had developed more of the music, more of the story itself, and so I saw it and I was totally stoked to do it. Dear God, it can't be, it can't be. No, my eyes tell me that it is so. I'm sorry, George, I know how you felt about him. But you must let go right now. We must commence to gather evidence. I initially found out that Paul wanted to do it about six or seven years ago. So I actually went and recorded my song about six years ago at Paul's house. It finally came around. And the song had not changed that much. Only a few lyrics had changed in it. When is the right time to do a musical episode? I think it's when you get to about 250 episodes. And so we targeted season 17, close to 300 episodes, and I think it was the perfect time. Once I came up with the idea of the coma, I realized that you could actually have the cast, the characters singing, and it would actually make sense because there was a reason why they were singing, and it fit into the frame because Murdoch doesn't actually have the capacity to step outside of what is actually real. The conceit of this is that Murdoch has been shot in the head and he is in a coma. And what you learn during the episode is that the bullet got lodged in the musical part of his brain. And people who are in his hospital room talking over the bed, he hears that as singing. If it's a dialogue scene, he's just imagining it. I like the idea that there was a scientific explanation for why this was happening. I would say Paul probably agrees and that was foremost in his mind. There needed to be like a reason why our main guy was hearing this and he had to be on the outside of everything in terms of what's happening to me in this world and what's happening to me in that world and why is everybody singing? It was easy to play, to lean into all of that as what I've already established for so many years. The only information that Murdoch has to solve this case is what he's already witnessed and experienced, plus things that other characters, Brackenreed or Margaret or Crabtree or Higgins, are discussing in his hospital room. So he takes that information in. Worked once, let's try it again. Here. Oh, that hurts, help me, save me! <laughs> the read through was one of those moments where we're all together. Um, it was like the first time in quite literally years. We went ahead and did one for the musical episode. I was really glad to be able to do it and I miss it. It's a fun part of making television um, and it's extremely useful. It was really a joy to sit there that day at the table read, something we hadn't done in at least three years because of COVID. And actually not only hear the episode in the mouths of our actors, but actually hear them sing. And for many of them, they hadn't heard each other sing. So it was really this fabulous discovery for all of us. I just thought that having a read through for this would be good because it, for, for most of the cast, uh, it was the first time they'd ever heard the songs. I mean, obviously we were quite confident in, in Paul's songs and felt it would be a nice surprise for the cast to hear it in total. And it got everybody quite excited about it. Well, the table read was necessary because it's almost like a proof of concept. 
There was no way around doing this and anybody not singing. Our voices are familiar to our fans. Some of us have done a lot of singing. I remember at one point, Helene was on set to do a scene. She goes, I just got back from the studio, did all my singing. You're next and you have no choice. It was one of those moments I just laughed. I was like, we gotta do this now. Let me through, let, through. let me through. I need to see him, oh my William. I'm fine, Julia, really. What have they done? I went into the studio and I didn't really know how it was gonna work. It's a weird thing where your instincts kick in and you are better at things than you realize. Those skills haven't been used for so long, but I trained as an actor and we did a lot of singing training. And so it just all comes back and all of a sudden um, you realize you can sing. Inside a pistol was discovered in a bend. We were told that we'd all be doing a little bit of singing and dancing. And I said, listen, I'm not much of a singer, but I'm fine with that if you're fine with that. And yeah, we'll see how it sounds. The few songs that I participate on. It's all put together very well. If you come in to the studio and you see what these actors do on a daily basis, they're working very long hours, you have one quick blocking rehearsal and then you shoot it. But with musical theatre you have to learn the music and the choreography, which is a bit of a different animal. So you have to do that rehearsal ahead of time. Those were full eight-hour days. It was beautiful to hear each individual come in and record their character singing that song. So the experience in the studio was great. Uh, we worked with a producer named Jono who recorded all of us and he just made it really easy um, and it was nice to finally have the track playing as you're doing it in real time. So it just gave it another layer to play with and you're hearing your own voice. Very rarely has it been a case of oh we got to get them back in and or get someone to revoice it. Not everybody's doing their stuff 100% and um, some were just so surprisingly good. If you've ever sung in front of people before, you know you gotta get over that first uh, embarrassment thing for sure. You have to just go for it. So there was a bit of a hurdle to jump over there at first. Fortunately, it was a very chill environment uh, for the recording process. Just able to take it slowly, as many takes as you needed. I think he's dead. He must be dead. He's clearly been shot in the head. It made me feel really happy that I was asked to be a part of it because musicals have been a part of my entire life. The studio experience is always very fun because you get to do it a thousand times if you want to and then they course correct you. <laughs> They're like, we'll just fix that note, Sharon, don't you worry about that. And I'm like, great. Actors, um, are, they're already performers and they already have a natural sense of cadence and being able to deliver uh, almost like a story in their voices. And so, it wasn't a huge stretch for many of them. They were great performers, so the performances are really convincing from an actor's perspective and from an audience perspective. So that's always a nice surprise. You forget that these people, they're trained and they've been doing this their whole lives and they've been on stages and they've done all kinds of things. And so the fact that they can sing shouldn't be a huge surprise. Yeah, I sang it, yeah. I can sing, yeah. I may go too many times to the same well, but nothing rings the bell like bloody hell. I remember doing it and getting in the line with the boys where we were doing the step ball change. And I was totally in sync with all the guys, which I thought, that's great. Because they're all good dancers, and if I look like I'm doing the same steps, that's, that's good. The fans are never going to tire of hearing uh, Tommy Craig sing Bloody Hell. I rarely shout out body parts or what goes down the drain. But bloody's what this mess is, and hell is where I'm headed. So I'm just going to yell, Bloody Hell! I loved watching Tom do his thing, and I loved watching all the constables perform the song. Um, but the thing that was terrifying was dancing, hitting marks, singing, uh, cameras, lights, all of it. Tim French, the choreographer, he'd had the music for quite some time. Tim and I, we've been friends since high school, and um, we grew up together loving musicals, so it was an amazing gift to be able to work with him on this project. We have the same film references. Lori Lind is a big musical fan. One of his favorite performers is Barbara Streisand, and then there's a whole bunch of others that he references often. There's a little bit of singing in the rain. We've got Johnny 
coming around a lamppost, which uh, was one of the first things I thought of because we have a lamppost and it's Johnny. The director, Laurie Lind, he had a very strong vision for it after reading the script and um, knew that he wanted choreography in some of the, the bigger production numbers. Once we knew that I was officially on board, then we started the whole process of working on the episode, the planning, and working with Laurie on, it was probably about a month and a half, maybe two months at the most by the time we were actually shooting the episode. I used to sing and dance when I was a kid and I thought I was good at choreography. The one move that I had to learn, very challenging, but Tim was so uh, kind and really talked us through it. Sometimes if you just learn the move and think about it as steps, it can be really confusing, but he gave enough like kind of character -y things or think about, about the energy of what it is that helped uh, bring it into your body. Shot from the side, it should pass through but from an angle, a glancing blow. So either from behind or he was facing right. Tim runs a rehearsal room like no one I've ever met in my life. He is, we used to call him again because you'd be at 4.30 in the afternoon. That's usually the point of the day in a musical theater rehearsal when everyone poops out and you don't really teach anything new. And at 4.45, Tim French is always like, again, again. You're like, we have to do this whole six minute number again. He's a real, well, he's a dancer. So he's, you know, discipline, discipline, discipline. Laurie was very specific. He said this, we live in 1910 to 1913 in Murdoch. He wanted it to feel, first of all, like a real classic musical, but also because it's in Murdoch's head, the musical portion of this uh, episode, it has to exist within his timeline. I definitely made an effort to enhance all the costumes in this episode, except for Murdoch, because he's the one caught in the coma world. Watts, we gave him some brighter accessories than I would traditionally allow Watts to have. Brackenreed's in a bit showier of a look, and uh, even at the end, Higgins is in a checkered jacket. One of the ways to make the concept feel stronger is actually to remove colors. So I didn't want to have any blues or any purples in the episode at all, but I did allow Ogden to be in that teal. She's the one in teal that really stands out. What is really important for people to know is how everyone who was involved in front of and behind the camera worked so hard. I don't think anyone has any idea how much work goes on behind the scenes, especially for a musical episode, which is all about spectacle. There were some people who came out to be performers. They were background performers. There was the guy who was panhandling. There was a lady selling flowers. There was all of these sort of people who are in their own right high-end performers. They had all kinds of stage experience. I call them real actors because I'm just faking my way through this whole thing, but they're like triple threat people. I had a lot of respect for musical theater people to begin with, and now it's like tenfold. They're incredible. Everyone just kicked it into high gear and I'm kind of proud of this one. I hope this is a beautiful escape, this episode. I hope it's joyous and delightful. The fans are going to freak out. Just good fun. Fun, dazzling, and exciting. Pure joy. Seeing their cast perform in a different way, seeing them sing, I think will be a big surprise for them. I know a lot of people rewatch their Murdoch mysteries and there's lots of episodes out there to rewatch, but I imagine this will become a real favorite. I would strongly encourage you to watch it. Oh,